Nobody watching this show. For more than 30 years now, I've had the good fortune to be working at the Detroit Institute of Arts as curator of film. And one of the great benefits of the job, of course, is that I get to see a lot of extraordinary films. And on a number of occasions over the years, I've had the rare privilege of meeting many of the extraordinary artists who create those films, those pieces of time, as director Peter Bogdanovich calls movies. Still, I can probably count on one hand those moments in which I came face to face with a figure so legendary, so overwhelming in character and power and intelligence that I remember being literally speechless. At the top of that list was a morning a few years ago when a man who had come to the DIA to speak to our audience about the importance of film preservation walked over to me, extended his hand, and said, I'm James Earl Jones. I didn't know whether to say, I know, or wow. I settled for trying to remember my own name and saying something like, pleased to meet you, which indeed I was. Just as I'm pleased to tell you that one of James Earl Jones' best known and most electrifying films, The Great White Hope, is our film festival selection for tonight. Those of you who've seen Ken Burns' remarkable new documentary, Unforgivable Blackness, The Rise and Fall of Jack Johnson, will immediately recognize the character Jones plays here, even though the great boxer's name was changed to Jack Jefferson by playwright Howard Sackler. The name change was probably made so that Sackler could change certain facts about the real Jack Johnson's life for dramatic purposes, while still getting to the heart of Johnson's story. Jones appeared in The Great White Hope on Broadway in 1969 and won the Tony Award for his now legendary performance. Howard Sackler's play was a powerful cry against racism, but in a way, the play's message was so forcefully presented that the Jack Jefferson character, as a person, as a human being, could have gotten overwhelmed by the play's dynamics if it weren't for one simple fact. The name of that fact is James Earl Jones. His triumph in both the stage and movie versions, the movie was released just a year after Jones won the Tony, became the launching pad for the great career that followed. Jones had been in three films before this one, but the knockout punch that he lands here is still astonishing to see and is truly the birth of a star. Here now are Jane Alexander, Moses Gunn, Hal Holbrook, Robert Weber, Chester Morris, B. Richards, and James Earl Jones in director Martin Ritz, the Great White Hope. Both Jane Alexander and James Earl Jones were nominated for Oscars for the 1970 The Great White Hope. And though neither walked away a winner, Jones' career took off into the stratosphere, and it has yet to come down to earth. Despite his almost constant movie work, it's somewhat ironic that this most hypnotic of actors, who was a drama student at the University of Michigan, by the way, may be best known for his performance in a film in which he's never even seen. I refer, of course, to Joan's portrayal of the voice of Darth Vader in the Star Wars series. Incredible as it seems, Jones is such a nice guy that he actually doesn't mind, I know because I've seen it happen, when fans ask him to say, I am your father, Luke, or some other line from Star Wars. But what really blows people away is to hear James Earl Jones say the simple words, this is CNN. Now, why reciting a line of TV station identification can actually give you goosebumps seems like one of the supreme mysteries of show business until you realize that some things do not so easily fit into the category of business, show or otherwise. James Earl Jones' voice, not just his voice, but his use of his voice, is as unique and thrilling as any great musical instrument when played by a brilliant artist. It's a gift, not just to him, but to us. And because of it, James Earl Jones will always be a true American treasure. I'll be back next time with another selection from our film festival. I'm Elliot Wilhelm. Good night. Detroit Home Magazine, from the publishers of Our Detroit, brings you into unique homes and gardens from around our area. Photographs, floor plans, and in-depth articles give you the latest trends in local interior design and architecture, along with tips for entertaining at home. Detroit Home, on newsstands now. 
Subscription information at 248-588-1851 or on the web at OurDetroit.com. I'm Jack. And I'm Mary Lou from the Lawrence Welk Show. Our musical family is coming to your city with an all-new live Lawrence Welk Show on stage. We have lots of fun singing and dancing as Mary Lou, Jack, and I join Big Tiny Little, Dick Dale, and Ava Barber, all original stars of the Lawrence Welk Show. Tuesday, March 8th, 2 p.m. at the Ford Community Performing Arts Center in Dearborn. Ticket information is available at 313-943-2354. The Daimler Chrysler Corporation Fund. We build cars, and we've been doing it for nearly a century. But for over 50 years now, we've done something more. We've built community, not with welding torches and stamping machines, but with support for community vitality, public policy, employee involvement, and education programs, all to build not just cars, but a better world. We're the Daimler Chrysler Corporation Fund. He was a rebel, a lover, a champion, and forgotten. PBS and Ken Burns tell the story of the greatest boxer you never knew. Unforgivable blackness, the rise and fall of Jack Johnson. Saturday at 8 p.m. From American experience, in the shadow of a world war, they were reluctant symbols of their people. We invested so much and Joe Lewis. But when they stepped into the ring, the world stopped and watched two men, Joe Lewis and Max Schmeling, fight for the title of champion. The fight on American experience. See it Monday at 9 p.m. Why do we forget things? Why does my husband go crazy watching football? Yeah! Why does your nose run and your feet smell? Why has the sun been getting dimmer for 30 years? Why is hitting a curveball so hard? Why? 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 Now PBS has a show for people like you who always ask. Why? Nova Science Now. Tuesday at 8 p.m. Really? Coming up on this episode of Antiques Roadshow, FYI, a big surprise for a Roadshow viewer that led to a rockin' reunion. We go to an auction that's all about the cash. Johnny Cash. And Nick Dawes tells us the story of the very first Lalique vase lost since 1900. I doubt that it would be worth any less than about $200,000. It's Antiques Roadshow, FYI. Wednesday at 8 p.m. In 1942, the Nazis create killing factories capable of murdering millions. Auschwitz Commandant Rudolf Hess takes pleasure in mass extermination and normal family life. Mengele, Dr. Josef Mengele. Mengele's horrific experiments on children defy the imagination. How could such evil exist? To understand the Nazi mind, you have to go inside the Nazi state. Wednesday at 9 p.m. Visit DetroitPublicTV.org and sign up for our free email newsletter. Read it each week and you'll be the first to know about upcoming programs and events. It's free at DetroitPublicTV.org. You know, over 30 years ago, something truly exciting began to happen in Detroit. A group of young artists came together and blew the lid off the art world. Whatever one may think of the work itself, no single force has had a more significant impact or influenced more artists than the Cass Corridor Movement. I'm Rob Maniscalco, and this is Artbeat. Good to see you. Yeah, how are you? <laughs> yeah, I'm great. How are you watch, doing? Watch the wet paint. Oh, that's okay. I, you know, I do a little painting myself. Yeah, it's, it's, it's good for sure. the, good for the hands. Wow, what do you got going here? Uh, well, this is a painting I'm working on. Uh, I'm trying to uh, develop 
an, an extension of the paintings that I did <coughs> recently and trying to take it to the next level and see where it's going. Consistency, Rob. I'm going to stay behind you. <laughs> the, the consistency of this paint is a little bit thick, right? Uh huh. So it's not spotting out as, as well as it should. I got to add a little bit of water to it. All right, hold on. Little Jackson Pollock action here. <laughs> you just you just kind of want to eat it. This. Uh, it's giving another dimension to the type of painting that I've been, that I was doing, right? That I mean, you know, I'm really delineating now. I'm I'm adding to the delineation a little bit with something that is kind of diffusing the structure of, of the painting. Yeah, it's amazing how the the, the sub uh, layer kind of disappears a little bit. Uh, this comes so forward, these all these hard edges. Right. Yeah. And a lot of people squirt paint. You know, it, it's no. It's yeah. no big deal. My but kid can do this. That's right. And <laughs> and so can mine. But <laughs> you know, it's something it, it, it's some element that I wanted to incorporate into the work. Yes. You know, because what's gonna happen after this is, is going to be a totally you know, a, a, another uh, Another layer of, of the work, another uh, whole different experience. addition to the to, to what's going on here. Yeah. So again, you know, I keep I keep emphasizing this is one step along a step by step process that he doesn't know how it's going to end. Okay, the next step, uh, I'm going to let this set up a little bit, and then I'm going to put another uh, layer onto it. We'll see where it goes from there. Okay, what's the, what's the next stage here? You've got this canvas set up. Well, this was dry now. This is this is dry, and uh, I'll be able to move this around a little bit. All right. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a lot of dimension to the painting here. All right. And it is going to splatter like crazy all over the place, and and make a big kind of mess. But. So now I've kind of covered up a lot of the imagery that I was working on before. But this is it's transparent, and what happens is when it dries, it, it'll bleed through, and, and you'll be able to see a lot of the underpainting. Right. And I kind of like to work it a little bit and give it a, a little feeling that, you know, instead of just a splash, I'm moving it around a little bit and creating a little more delineation with the So there is some material. intentionality. I mean there you know you're you're right. directing this I'm not just splashing it on the on the canvas. It's sort of like walking a dog who's who's leading who, right? Right. Okay. But uh, you know I look at it for a while and and think about it. Um, and now <clears throat> When you're thinking Structurally, about it, yeah. what I did is I painted over the structure and I've created like a body of water, you know, or, or a topographical situation where it's, it's geographical. And maybe, maybe now I, I'm, I'm coming up with an image that the delineations were really longitudes and latitudes and that this is a possibility that this could be you know, part of a body of water, you know, but but that's only, uh, you know, a fantasy scenario. It's not the uh, the total outcome of the painting. And it's not necessarily the, the intention, nor is it what the viewer has to see in order to be able to appreciate right. it. This is a working process for you, dealing with the, water, the river. The painting, basically, t from now on, takes on a life of its own, you know, and, yeah. and, and so now I'm going to be able to work back into this the blue is fine, but I think it needs a little bit more than just the, the one 
color. I mean, the, there's a different little tone of blue here, which I'm putting on, and then trying to bring back some. That's the original color. Yeah, trying to bring the surface it. back up. Yeah, and see what happens. My and human that... shield here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Great. I think this is going to work out fine if I could just like let this dry. The and, uh, sun will help that. And yeah, and we'll go uh, do the next step. All right. That's a great idea. You can catch the beat, Art Beat, twice a week, Saturdays at 5 p.m. and Wednesdays at 5.30, only on Detroit Public Television. I'm Paul Kangas with a nightly business report news brief. Wall Street ends a losing week with a sell-off as a drop in consumer sentiment and a rise in oil prices overshadow solid earnings from General Electric and United Technologies. The Dow Industrial Average falls 78 points, NASDAQ down 11, Standard & Poor's 500 drops 7 points. The chairman of the Federal Communications Commission, Michael Powell, announced today he will step down in March. Powell was the FCC chairman throughout President Bush's first term. The state of Connecticut is suing brokerage giant Martian McLennan and insurance firm Ace Financial Solutions. The state's attorney general claims Ace illegally paid Marsh a $50,000 commission to give Ace a contract managing workers' compensation cases. Monday, what some call the ugly details of cutting the budget deficit. For more financial news, tune in to Nightly Business Report weeknights on this public television station.